Hey guys, my name is Invictus, and today I want to talk about the brand new expansion coming to Hearthstone, The Witchwood. Now, The Witchwood so far looks great. I love the new mechanics like Echo uh, and Rush is, is also really great. I'm very happy that they're adding that. But I want to talk more specifically about one card, and is the first card on this list, and it's Baku. So, a lot of people have been speculating, like, what Baku would go into, and I think Dean Ayala actually hit it right on the head uh, in his Even Odd video. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Dean Ayala is one of the playtesters and balanced people on Team 5, um, and he's very active in the community. He's actually on my uh, Battle.net friends list, and we, you know, go back and forth occasionally about things that go on in the game. Um, great guy, uh, very smart when it comes to design stuff, obviously. That's why he's on Team 5. If for some reason you guys haven't seen Baku yet, um, Baku is this 9 mana 7-8. Uh, and the text is, if your deck has no odd cost, or has only odd cost cards, sorry, upgrade your hero power. So the hero power is a lot like just a car, where, um, you know, it's a much better version of your hero power so just car was primarily used for warrior if you weren't around at that time so tank up was the the obvious choice there you gain four armor instead of two and you could just tank up into oblivion into fatigue and you had like a billion armor and you just win the game in fatigue so but baku is a little bit different because you don't have to draw Baku. You get the effects immediately on turn one. You know, you, you could coin out your hero power if you wanted to. And, and you would get the upgraded version, which is a big deal. And I think that in this Face Hunter deck, and I think in, in all the decks that run either Baku or Gen, which is the even cost dude, you don't want to draw these cards because they're abysmal. So the deck that really does not want to draw Baku is going to be this face hunter that I want to talk about right now. So before I get into the Baku version of face hunter, I want to talk about face hunter in previous metas. So this is what a face hunter looked like back in the day. This is a list from 2015. Um, this was pretty much the norm. You had things capping out at three men uh, with Wolf Rider, and uh, I remember Argent Horse Rider being kind of popular in this deck too. Um, obviously Haunted Creeper with the Mad Scientist and the, uh, the Secrets. Uh, this deck was, this deck was very popular and it was very, uh, controversial. It was pretty easy to play. You just play your minions and you hit the face. Something I want you guys to notice about this deck is that the two cost cards now in this 2015 version of the deck aren't really necessary to the actual body of the deck uh you have knife juggler this is pre-nerf knife juggler so it's a three two um the mad scientist and explosive trap is nice but not necessary this could be replaced with, you know a few other cards uh the haunted creeper is great but not completely necessary obviously the beasts are really good for the kill command but the kill command the eagle horn bow the companion uh, all these one drops, you could easily just add more of them. And then, you know, this charge stuff like Wolf Rider, they're all odd cost. So you don't really need to change that part of it. Something that's also really core to this deck but isn't listed here is the hero power of Hunter, which is just deal two damage to the enemy face. With Baku, you'll be dealing three damage, which is insane for math reasons that I'll explain now. So this is a spreadsheet I put together in like five seconds. Uh, it just shows the damage as a percentage of the remaining health of the hero. So this is the hero health all the way down here. And if you're dealing two damage, this is the percentage of said health that you'd be removing. So obviously when they're at two health and you hit the hero power button, you're removing 100% of their health and you have lethal. So anything over 100 represents lethal. So in that first edition of Face Hunter that I showed on screen, uh, in general, how you want to play the deck is anything past like turn four or five, you're pretty much hitting the hero power button every turn. And at that point, they're in between probably 18 to 22 health is kind of the range that you're shooting for, obviously in certain matchups or, uh, certain scenarios is kind of different, but, uh, generally that's where they're at. So they're probably around here, 
So 10% of their health. So that's what you're going for when you start hitting the hero power button, to remove 10% of their health every single turn. I want to show you something a little bit crazy about this hunter hero power. All right. So the next couple turns, you could be removing 15%, 20%. When they're at six, you're removing a third of their health. So it scales as you move down into the game. So remember that 10% figure that I showed you here. So this is if you're doing three damage which is what you do with Baku. That's the upgraded hero power for Hunter. You start the game dealing 10% of their health with every click of the hero power button, which is repeatable every turn. 10%. This is an abomination, guys. 10%. And then pr you're probably doing a little bit more. So like turn four or five, when you start to hit the hero power button for real, you're doing like 15% of his total health every time you hit the button and every time you hit the button the button gets better also keep in mind that the core of the deck isn't really changing that much like i said earlier so now that we've seen this math that maybe some of you are into and maybe some of you are just rolling your eyes i'm going to show you guys the cards that would actually go into this deck right now and uh some of the cards that we may or may not see some of the flex spots you might see um, of course, you, it's hard to make predictions without seeing all the cards from the Witchwood, but since Face Hunter has been pretty standard since it came out, um, we can make some pretty strong predictions. Alright, here we are in the deck creation screen. I just selected Hunter. Um, worth noting that Alley, Cat, and Firebed are rotating out, so you can't play those in your deck. However, you can play things like Candleshot, which were in the original deck, a pretty okay replacement to Glaive Zuka, which you saw earlier. Jeweled Macaw and Raptor Hatchling are fair game, although Raptor Hatchling is pretty dog shit. Uh, Jeweled Macaw is also kind of dog shit, but you can play the one drops that are just in standard, right? You can just play Dire Mole, you can play Argent Squire, you can play Abusive Sergeant. Uh, Acarus Veteran isn't terrible, although I might not play it. Uh, Leprono probably not seeing play. However, the Pirate Package is probably seeing play. <laughs> I hate to break this to anybody who is a Patches hater. Uh, I personally played a ton of Pirate Warriors, so I don't mind it. But uh, the Pirate Package is going to be pretty good in this deck. A 1-mana 3-1 is really good in a deck that doesn't really care about the board too much. If it can deal 3 damage to face, that is insane for 1-mana. Worth noting that 3 damage to the face for 1 mana is also what Leper Gnome does. Looking through this collection, I'm actually um, reminiscing on how uh, awesome it is to play these sort of aggro decks that try and squeeze as much damage per mana that you're spending. Uh, it's a cool puzzle. It's like how much damage... How much damage is worth 1 mana? And, and how does that scale? Because you can't just play a deck full of 1 drops, right? If you could, you just play a bunch of Leopard Nope type cards. But Animal Companion is still seeing play. Bear Shark is going to be insane in this deck, I think. Eagle Horn Bow definitely making uh, its its presence known, even though there's no secrets to get more durability off of it. Who really cares? And Kill Command. Uh, again, with the Hero Power, you know, this is this is going to be a fast deck. And it's going to be a fast deck early in the meta because it's extremely easy to build. Also keep in mind that there's three expansions rotating out, which uh, are tools for the, the face hunter to use. But there are also tools in there to stop things like face hunter. So just to recap, um, face hunter is going to be a thing almost for sure. And it's going to be a deck that does not want to draw Baku. That's going to be almost as infuriating as drawing patches uh, in, in that meta. And it's probably going to be a really fast deck. I've heard people say that this is a soft buff to Call the Wild. I think those people are dumb. Uh, if you're playing Call the Wild on turn 9, then you've pretty much already lost. I don't see a scenario where you have a hero power that does you know 15% of their health. And you still want to play a 9-mana card uh, that's not just 
you know, killing them that turn. If you're just making a board, I think you're doing it wrong. So I see this as a deck that probably just has all ones and threes in it, and then probably Leroy to finish the game. Maybe it's running Bitter Tide Hydra, maybe not. Um, so overall, so far the expansion looks really good. Uh, I'm really looking forward to these deck building puzzles where you have to try and make a deck work with only half of the collection. Um, but this scares me, and I hope that it scares you guys too. It means you guys are looking out for uh, the game that you love. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you think I'm over-exaggerating the problem, let me know. Uh, if you guys think I'm right. Um, I, I want to hear you guys' opinion on this because I feel like I'm alone in this. Um, I haven't heard too many people just kind of complaining about this already. Uh, maybe it's too early in the expansion or something, but I just want to let everyone know where I'm at with this. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one.